Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate enthalpy or the energy which is associated with phase changes for a sample of water. The problem that we want to solve is as follows. How much energy is required to heat a 25 gram sample of ice which is at a temperature of minus 15 degrees Celsius to steam which is at a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. Now in order to complete this we need to take ice, heat it up to the melting point, fully melt it into liquid water. We need to then heat that water from 0 degrees Celsius to the boiling temperature of 100 degrees Celsius and then once we've converted all of that water to steam we need to superheat it to a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. The steps that we will use to solve this problem, there's actually five of them, we'll first need to calculate how much energy is required to heat that ice from the sub-zero temperature to the melting point, that'll be step one. Step two will be to calculate the amount of energy which is needed to fully melt that sample of ice, converting it from all solid to all liquid right here on the graph. Then step three will be to heat that liquid water from zero degrees Celsius to the boiling temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Step four will be to figure out how much energy is required to convert all the liquid water into steam or water vapor. Finally, we'll need to calculate the energy which is involved in heating that steam from 100 Celsius to a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. Our first step will require that we use the specific heat capacity of ice, 2.1 joules per gram degree Celsius. For step two, we need to use the delta H of fusion, which is the enthalpy for fusion or melting. This is 6.01 kilojoules per mole or 6,010 joules per mole. Step three requires that we use the specific heat capacity of water to heat the water from zero Celsius to 100 Celsius. That value is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Step four involves boiling or vaporizing the water, so we need to use the delta H of vaporization, 40.7 kilojoules per mole, 40,700 joules per mole. Finally, our last step, we'll need to use the specific heat capacity of steam, which is 1.7 joules per gram degree Celsius. We'll need to use this to calculate how much energy will allow us to take that steam at 100 degrees Celsius and heat it to a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. Here are some equations and values we'll need to use in order to complete this problem. We need to know that the starting temperature for the ice is minus 15 degrees Celsius. The final temperature for the steam will be 150 degrees Celsius. The melting temperature for water is zero degrees Celsius. The boiling point, or the vaporization point, is 100 degrees Celsius. The mass of the water is 25 grams. The molar mass of water is 18.02 grams per mole. This allows us to calculate the number of moles of water as 1.387. We'll look at that calculation in just a moment. We'll use the following equations. Delta H for fusion will be equal to the number of moles of water multiplied by the delta H of fusion constant. The delta H for vaporization will be calculated in a similar fashion. Number of moles multiplied by the delta H of vaporization. We need to know that enthalpy delta H is it can also be signified with a Q, and we use this equation, Q equals MC delta T, for a number of the calculations that we'll use in this problem. So here's that calculation for the number of moles of water. Remember we have a sample which is 25 grams of water. We're going to use the molar mass of water, which is 18.02 grams per mole. Notice that the units will cancel grams with grams. This allows us to calculate number of moles being 1.387 moles of water. There are two sig figs in 25 grams. So, so because there are two sig figs in 25 grams, we'll keep two sig figs for the number of moles. However, I've kept some guard digits, the eight and the seven. We'll use those in the calculations just to avoid rounding errors. So now we'll take a look at the different steps involved in completing this calculation. Remember step one, this is the calculation to figure out uh, how much energy is converting that ice from a temperature of minus 15 degrees Celsius to a temperature of zero degrees Celsius. We need to use the equation Q equals MC delta T to calculate this. So the mass of the water is 25 grams. The specific heat capacity of ice is 2.1 joules per gram degree Celsius. The change in temperature is 15 because we're going from minus 15 to zero degrees Celsius. This allows us to cancel grams here and here 
Celsius cancels with Celsius. We're left with units of joules. This allows us to calculate the number of joules which is required to heat that ice from a temperature of minus 15 to 0 degrees Celsius. That is 787.5 joules. In step 2, we're now calculating the change in energy which is going to be required to fully melt our sample of ice. So we want to fully convert it from all solid to all liquid. This will involve using the number of moles of the water multiplied by the delta H of fusion for water. So we're using the value 1.387. Remember that has only two sig figs, but we're keeping the 8 and the 7 to help us avoid any rounding errors. Moles cancels with moles. We're using the delta H of fusion, 6,010 joules. This allows us to calculate that we'll need 8,335.87 joules to fully melt all that ice into liquid water. Step three, this is involving the conversion of the water from zero degrees Celsius to a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Again, we need to use the equation Q equals MC delta T for this step. Again, the mass of the water is unchanging no matter what state it is in. It is 25 grams. The specific heat capacity of liquid water now, 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, and we can see how units are going to cancel. Our change in temperature is 100 because we're heating the water from 0 degrees, the melting point, to 100 degrees, the boiling point. We calculate here a total number of joules for this process of, well, you just saw it, and I lost it. We'll pull it back when we complete the calculation. In step four, now we need to calculate how much energy is required to convert all of the liquid water into steam or water in the gas phase. So we'll use the number of moles, 1.387. We're going to multiply this by 40,700, which is the delta H of vaporization. Moles cancels, and here we can calculate the number of moles. 56450.9 joules is the amount of energy required to convert all that liquid water into water in the gas phase. Step five, here we're going to use our delta T value of 50 degrees Celsius. We need to heat that steam from the boiling point 100 to the final temperature of 150. So again, we use the equation Q equals MC delta T, 25 grams of water. Now we're using the specific heat capacity of steam because we've converted the water into the gas phase. Units cancel. This allows us to calculate the amount of energy for this step of the process. That's 2,125 joules. Now, to determine the total energy, we need to take the values from each step and add them together. So again, in step one, we calculated 7, uh, sorry, 787.5 joules. For step two, we calculated 8,335.87 joules. In step three, we calculated 10,000 450 joules. In step four, our calculation was 56450.9. I put in the other decimal here just so we can see that we're lining up our columns correctly. And our final step, five, 2,125 joules. So now we need to add all of these values together, and this will be the total energy required to heat that ice, melt it, heat it, boil it, and then heat that steam to a final temperature of 150 degrees. Here we're looking at sig figs. Remember that we had 25 grams of water, which is two sig figs. So I can see my last full column will wind up being this column, the thousands column. So my final answer will be 78,000 joules or 78 kilojoules. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you found this video helpful. You can find more of my videos at my YouTube channel. You can find my newly posted videos on my Twitter page, or you can also find other uh, resources at my classroom webpage at wikispaces.com.